And uh, if I sound funny, it is because I am on a cell phone. Uh, all those years that I've been disparaging Mr. Corolla for coming in late to the studio, uh, tonight is my first night to do this. And so in the interest of being real and being, uh, oh, my God, uh, I'll just take it on the fly like this. And so I'm like a block away from the radio studio. The reason I'm on the phone, the reason I am a minute and a half late is I had the great good fortune of doing Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight with Mr. Corolla. And they gave me every assurance. They guaranteed me I'd be out of there on time. And uh, 940 rolls around, and I still hadn't done my segment yet. So uh, it was really delightful. I'm actually outside the studio right now, and uh, I'll be in in just a second. Uh, I had the opportunity on that show to talk about uh, something I like talking about best. That is my book, Cracked. And, uh, those of you that have been supportive for it, I thank you very much. It's a book I wrote about my personal experiences and my day job, taking care of people uh, was sick with very, very severe addictive disease. And right now, uh, I'm at a red light. I'm treading water. Anderson, maybe could I have a phone call while I make my way into the studio there? Do you really want to do that? I, I, I think I've got time for one phone call. I'm, I'm literally out at the gate right now, and why don't we take a phone call? And if you guys lose me, it's because I'm walking into the studio. And I don't know if the show has reached new heights or new depths, but well, I, I apologize. It's I'll new just, valleys, dude, for sure, new depths. You know, I just got my, uh, oh, this is great. Uh, yeah, I want to take a phone, phone call. All right, here you go. You got Andrew. He's from Utah. He's 15 years old. Uh, his 14-year-old girl pal wants to lose virginity to him when she turns 15. And, and is, here, is the band thrice there, by the way? I, I'm not there. I don't know. Okay, well, that's our guest tonight. Here's Andrew. Hello? So, uh, hey, Andrew? Yeah. This is total chaos because Drew just dropped off. So I'm going to put you back on hold. We're all going to enjoy the uh, Drew Boogie here. I'm going to have to hook it up. Hold on. Okay, working on the Drew Boogie. Ow! Drew Boogie. I seem to have lost the Drew Boogie, which, okay, here we go. And uh, please enjoy the Drew Boogie. Um, Drew will be with us in one minute. Thank you. Ow! Get down. Have sex with me. Gee, it hurts. Have sex with me. Faggot better have sex with me. I want to have sex with me. I was born. So I had anal sex. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. Tried to be straight. Or I thought I shouldn't be straight. And I was confused. Hurt me. You know, pee on this makes me sick. It hurts when I urinate. It makes me sick. Anal sex makes me sick. This guy's penis makes me sick. I've had anal sex, but felt no effect. I've got these lesions. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. It makes me sick. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? Ow. You're fat. Ow. You're gay. Ow. Confused. Ow. You're sick. Ow. You're overweight. Ow. You're still a virgin. Ow. You're dysfunctional. Ow. Not acceptable. Dr. Drew's right. Right, 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 I was a minute and a half late to the show. I don't think I've ever been late to the show before. So this is a first for Loveline, and I promised our producer that this wouldn't happen, and I was promised that I would be let out in plenty of time to drive from the Hollywood and Highland where Jimmy's studio is to Culver City. Where hey, we're Drew. Culver City stuff. Yeah, Anderson. Just to let you know, Anne is very pissed off. I don't blame her. She's How about me? very pissed. No, she's pissed, she's pissed at you, though. I don't blame oh, her. Oh, yeah. What, what can I do? Listen, I was there. I wouldn't, Listen, tell her that... Valerie, she'll preach it, this totally melted down over there. So, here we are. I was given every assurance we would be here on time. So, gentlemen, how's it going? It's going, going good. very well. And the CD is called? The Artist in the Ambulance. What does that refer to? Uh, it's kind of in reference to a short story by a guy named Al Burian, but it's kind of asking the question as uh, as artists, is there kind of more that, that we can do, like, in our music and also outside? Kind of, we work with charities on each record and... Uh, so, that's the basis of it. Interesting. You guys are from Orange County, right? Yep. Yeah. For those that are listening right. around the country, it's a small but very famous county just outside of Los Angeles. Yeah. So they've a, now made a TV a terrible, show about it. A terrible it. show about it now. <laughs> yeah. Do you mean it's it's really, it, it isn't really like that? Oh, yeah. It's, it's totally it's like exactly that. It's exactly like that. Okay. I still haven't seen that yet. 
All right. You guys ready to take some calls? Yeah. And we'll be sure. here in just a couple minutes. And here is Anthony, who's 23. Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Uh, Dr. Drew, this is Anthony. Um, hey, Anthony. Hey, I just want to say I love your show. Um, I think you're really great, and you give a lot of good advice. So that's why I'm Thank calling. you. Are you mad that I was a minute and a half late tonight? Uh, you know, I'd let you, I'll let you off this time. But Thank you. Next time, It'll never happen again. Um, well, I don't know what to say. There's nothing I can do to take it away. It happened. All right. My question is, um, I'm 23, and I the comment because there was a comment that uh, Adam actually made the other night about you know 24 year old guys that you know if they have never had a relationship or still a virgin, you know that's kind of uh, you know kind of a weird thing, and you know that's kind of almost my situation. He year, says, so. now this, this is not my opinion. He will say, oh, it's got to be some religious thing. Yeah, no, opinion. actually, it's totally not any religious thing. Um, you that know, probably has not, not been my experience. I think some people make that choice for various reasons, and uh, it works for people. Yeah, well, actually, you know, with my situation, it's not really my choice, really, because, oh, you know, oops. I've been trying to, you know, meet, you know, and date girls and things and, you know, have a relationship, but it just never really, you know, worked out that way. And it just seems to me like, you know, at what point does it get to be, you know, kind of weird if a girl finds out that, you know, you're 23 or 24 and what do you guys think? never had a serious Is that ever weird? I'd, you're 40, I think weird. it depends on... Yeah. The girl, like I don't know. It, do you it, think most women would be kind of be intrigued by that? Maybe, probably. I mean, I, I think it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. Yeah, I definitely and, wouldn't try to look for a, a date that like I got. I got to find a girl by this date because otherwise they're gonna think I'm weird. Right. The irony with our callers is that these 23 year old guy will call and say, I, "I've been, you know, I'm, I made a pledge of virginity. I'm abstinent." But uh, I gotta get this over. I gotta get a prostitute. Yeah. I mean, it's like, right. wait, wait a minute. What, <laughs> why did you you spend, dedicated all this value to this, and now you're gonna just completely trash it? There, there's no schedule. Like, yeah. what schedule are you are you holding yourself to? Right. Well, right. it just seems, you know, like he's worried that he's gonna be embarrassed if women are gonna judge him. I, I think I'm more worried that it'll be come to a point where if I'm 24, 25, 30, that if I 30, I'd look into it. I'd yeah. look into it at 30. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We all we all agree 30 is the threshold. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Doctor. All right, Anthony. Good for right, the call. Bye. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Chuck, who's 15. Chuck? Hi. Hey, Chuck. What's up? Um, yeah, my problem is there's two girls that like me, and one of them is very attractive. Whatever. And not very sexual. And one of them is not attractive, but very sexual. So they're both very sexual. Yeah. No, one, the, no, the one yeah. he likes is not sexual. Oh, okay. So uh, at 15, you're already thinking about exploiting somebody? You've already had sex what? Countless times. I mean, countless times. That's countless not. Times. Sex isn't really the problem. It's just I'm having a dilemma of which one to pick. I would either which one, one you Yeah, the better I think personality. This, does, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't like. There's no question. There's no question. You're not asking a question. You don't like personality. You're saying one. I like one, and I don't like the other. What should I do? Yeah. I'm not even saying that. He's saying one's one's yeah, good she's, looking and one's not. Yeah, but he said she's sexy, but I'm not into her. It's sort of what he said, right? Yeah, well... There you go. I like, that? I like one of them. Yeah. The oh, well, there you go. That's it. That's it. it. There yeah. you go. You've just answered you, it. You win. That's the winner right there. Actually, I, I don't think that was a real thing. Sort of no question <laughs> there. I don't like this girl, but I like this girl. Okay, here's a, this is kind of one for me here. This is a Lulu16. Hi. I have a Hi. question yeah. um, for Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. And um, my breasts aren't even, and mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter to my boyfriend, but it's just, it's a big tick with me. and A big what? Huh? Tick. It's a big she, tick. With she has you? ticks. Tick. Tick. Yeah. And um, I was wondering what kind of procedures I would have to go through. To Hang get on, I'm still intrigued. A big tick, like a big deal. Yeah. Big tick. Yeah. Is that a Georgia term? No, it's not a Georgia no. term. Not a Georgia term. All right. Uh, and you want to make you want to change this? Yeah. That's a very common thing for there to be a chain, a difference of even of one cup size. Is it one cup size or a couple of cup size? One cup size. One cup size. That's very, very common. And the different directionality and sort of where, you know, the, so the symmetry of things can be off. And plastic surgeons do a lot of repair. If you, if you listen to our show last night, we had a guy up here that was a urologist and a plastic surgeon. His opinion was if you're not happy, get fix it. We can fix these things easily. Go fix it. And I'm sure that's what he would recommend. But um, do you know what kind of procedure it would be? They do, an, I suspect, an a augmentation on the one. That's smart. Uh, okay. To even things out, okay? Okay. But do you go check, consult with a cosmetic or plastic surgeon? Huh? C consult with a cosmetic or and plastic surgeon and uh, okay. get an opinion. We'll see what can be done. All right. At 16, though, they might they might ask you to wait till 18 just to see if things sort of do even out with time because they, sometimes they do. So, you guys on a tour? Uh, we just got back. We've been Where you going? touring all year, but we did, we're just in Europe. Uh, Is that wild? Did you ever expect to? 
Is that weird that we're in Europe? Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. It, yeah, I mean, it's totally crazy. Where'd you go? Uh, we went all over the place. We went to some places we hadn't been, like Norway and Sweden, Belgium. Uh, we went to Italy, where we've been before, in the UK and Germany. Do you guys have Switzerland. girlfriends or anything out here? Uh, do you I, leave people behind? Or you just, you're, yeah, you're I young? have a, a wife. A wife? You're married? Okay, you're married. Kids? Nope. Oh, that's somebody's waving in there. That must be your wife. Yes. <laughs> and and do you, does she get to go on the tours with you? Uh, she'll come out sometimes. She has school and stuff, so. Oh, my goodness. That's got to be hard. Yes, it is. Hmm. But we actually have, like, three weeks off now, which is total what we've had off this entire year, so. That's grueling. People, people don't really appreciate what that means to be, you know, sort of living out of a bus. Yeah. <laughs> and especially when your wife's on you know, the other side of the ocean and your family. Yeah. Your I life. wouldn't mind it uh, very much at all if I didn't, like, have my wife at home. I don't know. It's it's definitely not, like, a very comfortable lifestyle, but it's it's fun. I don't know. You get to see a lot of cool places, and I definitely don't take that for granted. Right. right. That's great. How about you? Is there... No, I'm single. But, I mean, I miss being around my friends and my family and yeah. stuff like that. Just having, like, your own... Like bathroom, bathroom, yeah, awesome. bed. <laughs> you know, bed. All right, let's take a call here. This is uh, Kelly, who is 22. Kelly. Yes. Hey, what's going on? Oh, uh, I have a weird question. I generally always just assume that guys look at porn for like the rest of their lives. Which, well, <laughs> whatever. Well, I know, but what happened was the other day I had gone to sleep. My husband stayed up all night. And he had told me he was up playing, like, video games and stuff, but come to find out, I saw in our computer he had downloaded a bunch of porn. Mm. Which generally I would assume, okay, you know, they would do that if they're not getting any or whatever. Well, I'm bipolar, so you know how I end up, like, overly sexual and all that? When you're in your manic phases? Yeah. Well, almost all the time, even during depression, really. Okay. But, uh... So just, I don't know, you, I don't know hold why hold I'm trying to make Kelly. logic of it, but it just seems odd to me that he would be looking up women if I'm pretty much able and ready all the time. Well, you're right that, that men just do that anyway, right? Well, they I'm just, they just do thought, that. But now all of a sudden, I guess I started taking it personally now that I was in the situation. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, they, and you, you've got a pretty good attitude about, about it. it. I guess is the other part. You what? He lied about it, too. He said he was up playing well, video games. Let, so I guess let me part of it. Let's sort of explore your drive for a second. Are All you right. were you sexually abused when you were growing up? No, no. no, so no and you're not an addict? No, never so have it's really, been addicted to anything. Okay, so it's really just your bipolar condition that sort of drives That's you That's what that, I'm right? assuming is what makes it do that, do, yeah. do you overwhelm him? Is he sort of hiding out, trying to I'm have wondering, some me time? It's like, it seems like if I am more aggressive, he kind of backs off, and all of a sudden he's like, whoa. It's like yeah, I prefer... But well, I, I, I you know, I don't want to. That's what I was kind of asking is maybe if I'm overwhelming, if that would be. Yeah, good this this actually isn't the usual situation because it sounds like, know. well, it's it's a little it's sort of a subtlety here is that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it sounds like you have a good relationship. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. And and you're okay together. He's happy, but there's sort of well, a drive here. He's in the navy, so would that and, have anything and to do with it? To be it, it might be. I mean, he may just be sort of uh, sort of trying to get away and. Men sometimes, well, all people tend to sometimes right. use a mechanism called dissociation, as a way of managing overwhelming feelings. Okay, yeah. And, and he may just sense. be sort of in his fantasy world as a way of getting away, and maybe it was just that one time. If it was a recurrent thing, yeah, yeah. that's when I would really look into it. And <laughs> it doesn't have, it, I guarantee, I'm asleep first. here's what I can guarantee you. It has right. nothing to do with his attraction or love for you. What, whatever it is, whatever his motivation, yeah, whatever his motivation has nothing to do with that part of your relationship. It may have something to do with him needing to kind of push back a little bit and creates a little, little separation or some sort of me time kind of thing. But uh, it does not sound like a bad situation, frankly. And, and nor, nor do you sound like you're particularly defensive about it. You're just kind of wandering and talking about it. I think you'll be all right with it. Just, but don't, don't come on too strong with him. This is uh, Phil, 21. Yeah, um... Well, uh, I was uh, at a party about last week, and I was um, kissing this girl, and it kind of went a little bit too far. And, well, we ended up having oral sex back in uh, one of the bedrooms. And I was wondering, uh, well, I found out later on from her that she had uh, warts. And I was wondering if um, my current girlfriend would get warts from me kissing her on the mouth. No, I don't. I've never heard of that happening. But what's up with your girlfriend? I mean, what's up with your current relationship that you're hanging uh, with? <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, maybe it's time to end that relationship, huh? I mean, yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? He's cheating. He's hanging out. Yeah, well, I, like I mean, the it was fact that he brought up the. the party. I was just kind of kissing this girl. I was yeah, just <laughs> chilling. <laughs> yeah, just chilling, kissing. Pow. But then, 
I don't know. You know, it just it just happened. That's a very that's where our college usually. But the weirdest about things. thing is, it's like every time, like this girl, for some reason, she kept like kissing me and everything, and she kept saying something. What does that mean? Anything to anybody? Duck butt. That's got. I was thinking bogus call all the way, and that's what that means. So, Anderson, bleep that guy out. No. Yeah. Uh, okay, did you pick up on that at the beginning? Anderson? Yeah, yeah, I always do though, but I just keep my mouth shut on this end. Well, come on, don't, don't clue me in. I, I, I kind of, I kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. What do you think that is? The, the fake call. What motivates people to do that? I'd be on the radio. Yeah, just to you know, goof for to tell their friends they they did it. And usually we we can tell. There's sort of a there's either sort of a glibness or an emptiness. And it doesn't feel right. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This is uh, Andrew, 15. Hey, hello. Hey, Andrew, what's going on? How's it going, Drew? Well, I'm good. What's happening with you? Um, I just got to tell you, man, you're basically the closest thing to my God as there is, honestly. Oh. Um, I, I, I got to I'm, I'm actually coming to Utah tomorrow to speak at University of Utah. I know. Actually, I was calling you because um, the kid that set that up is my brother. Cause oh, for God's sakes. They were wondering who to get, and they were thinking about these different people. I said, well, why don't you get Dr. Drew? Because I was sure about you talking about campuses, so you're actually going there because of me. Oh, my God. Well, thank you, Andrew. That's very interesting. Yeah. So that's cool. Are you going to be there? Uh, definitely, yeah. All right. I'll look for you tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I haven't got cracked yet, but I have you and Adams' old book. That is a piece of – it's a good book. Ooh, I, whoa, whoa, I, whoa. I, I, Andrew, I, I, 15. I, What's that? I I oh, come on. I said it. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah, anyways, my question is um, – this girl, it turns like she's got some bet with her friend or whatever. They weren't going to lose their virginity until they're 15, and she turns 15 in like two weeks. And she's and we're just kind of friends with benefits now. But she's told me that she wants to lose it to me. Yeah, and, why don't you convince her at 15 again? Yeah, it's not like a good time, I think, to just set aside. Like, yep. <laughs> What's her hurry? Go throw it away. Yeah, just I don't know. No reason. What her hurry is. And are you sexually active yourself already? Um, I mean, I'm not a virgin, but I wouldn't exactly say active. Like, I had, I lost my virginity like probably two months ago, and I haven't had sex since then. So. Okay. And do you want to be a girlfriend? With, have this girl as your girlfriend? Um, not right now. I mean, maybe when I'm so, like 16. So but. I think you said she'd be kind of a friends with benefit thing, right? Yeah, that's what that's what we're doing right now. But. What's? Are you having sex with her now? No, we're just having oral sex. Oh, oh yeah, our callers—they never cease to impress. Um, uh, here's the deal. Are you telling her the whole time, I don't want a girlfriend, I don't want a girlfriend? Is that the kind of um, messages I'm just, you're... I'm just saying, like, until I get my car and stuff, I don't really want a girlfriend. Andrew, you are too much. <laughs> uh, we we got to have a little chat tomorrow night, you and I. Very logical. Um, yeah. I suspect, yeah. I, I'll tell you, I've never seen the friends with benefit thing work. Always somebody develops very intense feelings. And I suspect 14, 15 year old, she already has some heavy feelings for you and she's just keeping them to herself because she knows that you're going to, you're going to abandon her if she lets you f know how she's actually feeling. I suspect. I'll back that up. Yep. And if not, the real, and this is again, this is not to disparage her or you, but this is how humans behave. If not, she's acting something out. And that something is some sort of heavy trauma when she was growing up, and you're there just to sort of be the vessel for that action. You know what I'm saying? Which is not a cool. Yeah. So which is not which is not good for her. It's not that you're not really being a friend. Then you, re a friend should be setting boundaries with that kind of behavior. So either way, it's like not a great situation for you. I, I love, you and I will talk tomorrow night. This we should. Uh, I, I would suggest you go back to being friend with her and not definitely not have sex with her. Okay. Okay. So would you? I'm going to build. In fact, at, at Utah University of Utah tomorrow, night, I'm going to build the whole case. Why that's gonna be the whole talk tomorrow night? Why Andrew should uh, go back to being friends with uh, your buddy? So okay, you come man, I give you your ID for your speech. So that's right. This, you, right. Got, you got you got you got me the job and the, and the whole speech right here. You're fantastic. You know, would you go as far as to like actually tell her not to lose it yet? Uh, y yeah, yeah. I would as your as her friend if that's really what you are. Yeah, say so, uh, she's doing some stuff and not being honest about her feelings, and uh, it's, it's time for her to really uh, let the truth be told. Okay. All right. Cool. Hey, is Adam coming in later? Or yeah, he'll, he'll... who cares? Who cares? <laughs> he'll, he'll be in in about two minutes, I bet. And Anderson, can I play a, a thrice song now? What do you no, think? No, it's way too late, Drew. Come on. That's uh, way too late. Cause, <laughs> you know, Adam's gonna be here about twenty-three after anyway. So all right. Is he just slower driver than you? Uh, no, he gets. He has to stay to the end of the show. Uh, the, the big plan was. 
I was going to get out in plenty of time to get here, and you know, here it is. We're watching the clock tick by. The, you'll be on at nine twenty-five, off by nine. You know what? Nine thirty-seven. Yeah, it's a good time to play the song now that you say it. Yeah, <laughs> let's play the song. You're being very cryptic tonight. I'm sorry. I'm just a little pissed. Let's play the song. Oh, at what? It has nothing to do with you or the show or anything. <laughs> I have a kind of balance, balance, Drew. Yeah, I know that about you. All right. Ready. Oh, he's not ready over here, so we can't do it anyway. So let's go. Break. Good time. All right, we'll go to break then. So uh, this is Dr. Drew. Adam is uh, in here in about a minute or two. The phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. The band is Thrice. The new, it's a, is it, when was it released, the CD? Uh, July 22nd. July 22nd. The CD is The Artist in the Ambulance, and we'll be hearing the song All That's Left at the end of the next segment, or maybe the beginning of the next segment. In the meantime, we'll be taking your calls, and be right back. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. <laughs> That's Dr. Drew. All right. Well, Drew told you everything that went on tonight, right? Repeatedly. Well, they they witnessed it. What are you talking about? I, I, I... All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. They need to be filled in. Thrice is uh, here. Nice to meet you guys, hey. uh, by the way. Sorry about uh, tonight. It's a That's little bit of a uh, cluster F going on. <laughs> That's kind of entertaining. Oh, we just did These a... guys uh, all liked it. See, that's the thing. They're encouraging cool. us. Well, it's certainly I different. It was cool. <laughs> you running in, pulling your tie out. Certainly different. <laughs> A lot of a uh, lot of traffic out tonight. Yes, uh, I know. Yes. I know. Yeah. Not only that, I got a, a cop like going with me the whole way. It's weird when they pace you yes. and they're going four miles an hour slower than the speed limit. You don't realize, by the way, till a cop gets behind you, how hard it is to feather the throttle. That sort of in between <laughs> third and fourth gear yes. thing and oh. keep it right at thirty-five. I wish I wish there was some sort of sign you could flick on, like uh, in your car, like when a cab has, yes. you, you know, oh, yeah. that light Vacancy. that says, like, I know you're a cop. I'm a white guy. <laughs> I got registration. I'm gonna. I'm now going to go up to 38, okay? I'm not making a move. It's cool. Hey, if you, if you see me creeping up toward 40, you can hit the rollers real quick. Send me a signal. I'll bring it back down. Like, I just... Because sometimes you don't know if the cop is like, is, is he planning on pulling me over, or is he just kind of out looking to make a real score, and I'm just making an ass myself going 32 miles an hour? <laughs> All right. Know. There should be a rule, though, and there's nothing worse than the cop on the freeway who's doing, in, in the 55, who's doing 49, and everyone is scared to go past him. Like, there should be a rule that cop cars have like to go. It's cheating. It's cheating. It's cheating. It's cheating. They, yeah. they have to go five miles an yeah. hour faster than whatever's yeah. posted. It's unfair. Yeah. It's either that, though, or they're flipping their lights on to go through yeah. like, red lights just because yeah. they feel like it. Cop, <laughs> cops are, like, they have two modes. They, they have, like, uh, all out, balls out. <laughs> You know, uh, e brake slides around the corner, or they got ten miles an hour slower than the speed limit. There's no, there's no in between cop mode. They don't have a jog; they have a yeah. walk and a sprint. <laughs> I'd like to introduce the jog to them. Now, let's work on that, Drew. Okay, where are we? Take we take call. Yeah, yeah, then, take call. Don't play a song. They call a song. Yeah. All right, Brandon. Okay, things are going on just swimmingly here. All right, I'm going to put uh, Brandon on hold, and uh, we'll talk to, uh, theoretically, Adrian, who's 16. Adrian? Oh, my goodness. Adam? Yeah. You are so cool. I watched every You're scaring thing. me, Adrian. I've, I've even watched Captain Nebula. Captain Nebula? Oh, yeah. And I was just doing the Buzz voice Lightyear. of uh, Buzz Lightyear. And the Grim Reaper and the Family Guy. Well, that oh, was, that yeah. was good. That well, was good. That was seminal work for me. You know, oh. what's always great about the Captain Nebula thing is my two little nephews were crazy into Buzz Lightyear. Oh, yeah. And I used to tell my sister, I do the voice of the com of Buzz's commander, you know? And she was like, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the kids are nuts for it. Yeah, I see them with the toys and stuff. Yeah, I got the, I got the DVD. They're going to go nuts. You tell them. And she was like, yeah. Anyway, I need to borrow some money. <laughs> I was like, wow. I met Adam's dad for the first time tonight. Oh, really? Quite an experience. Mm. I picked a great my my dad Drew. Has my dad ever Everything. went to anything I've ever done? Never. I was shocked. He yeah. he called me today and he's like, "I want to come out and watch Jimmy's show tonight." And I was wow. like, "All right." But he he came out on nine eleven. I know it's interesting. It's like the macabre. worst the worst <laughs> but night we've ever yeah. had. He's there, and then by the way, that'll be the last time he ever shows up to anything. So when he's his, when his, his dying thought will be, I saw my son once in something. It kind of sucked. 
And that was it. <laughs> it. It was kind of a, one of those weird energy nights again, too, with the, the guest that was sitting next to me. His mom used to suspend. He was making that up. Okay. All right. All right, Adrian. It's, it scared me. Thanks right. for the praise. What's your Thank question? You. Okay, I have a problem. It's been for like the past two years. Every time I pee, it goes two different ways. It shoots out two different ways. And mm. I do not know how to control it. And I'm not going to a doctor because I do not want to bring it up to my parents because my parents are correctional officers, and they're very, very anal. You mean they, they know where you might have uh, developed this problem? Are, are you sexually Maybe. active? I don't yeah. know. Have you had an STD? Never. I'm not even sexually active yet. Huh. Hmm. Well, uh, there could be some congenital stricturing or something in there. They can, they, it's pretty easy for them to open it up. It, I, I had that problem for a while, too, and it just turned out just, just a little piece of poo stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> and it, once I blew it out, it was fine again. At six months, I walked around with that. I had no idea. It's a little nugget. Sometimes, you know, some caraway seed the guy passed or something. I don't know what it was. So, it could be a crust issue. Yeah. yeah. Adrian, you really should have this evaluated. Sometimes these are congenital problems. Sometimes it's from a little infection or but, but it's every single time? I'm serious. Every single time, it splits off and goes two different ways. Even when I jizz, it sometimes does it. Uh, thank you for the imagery. I appreciate I'm it. I'm just thinking if I'm ever, like, camping with Adrian, I'm going to stay right in the center. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully just the Red Sea will part. <laughs> you know? Adam, All right. what is, like what is it that you have against Bakersfield? Seriously. Well, it's a horrible place. <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm fine with it. Oh, and... It, it, we don't, like, we don't it, like places that are really, really hot. Yeah, it's too hot yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you been able to, seriously, jack off at one sitting? How many times? Hey, Adrian, this may be why you have the split stream, buddy. You, you may be irritated. Well, no, 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 no. Well, no, no, yeah. I, I think I could beat Adam. I think I have beat Adam, actually. In less than an hour and a half, yeah. I was capable of doing it 20 times. Uh, uh, no sorry, bro. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, you did beat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 20 times in an that, hour that and a half. That seems inhuman to me. Something came out all 20 times? <laughs> Not even. Oh, well, yeah. then, then okay. it doesn't count. Yeah. It oh. doesn't count. Yeah, that's right, brother. <laughs> but you earned the split stream, I'll tell you that. The split stream award and is... And uh, plus, you you, you got to document that kind of stuff. I mean, don't just take your word for it. You have to have a guy there who's licensed, who's bonded, who's from watch. the sanctioning board. Yeah. He has one of those clickers that the guys, <laughs> umpires use them every time sometimes. To show that it's not being reused. You know, they need to test to make sure it's not some sort of trick. Well, yeah, yeah. We have to, And something has to be produced each what time. We have to... We have to have a sample of that. Listen, we shouldn't waste any more time with this. This is not a record. All right. You it was pro get yes. Ronies or something from all that, all that action. Imagine yeah. his both his parents are correctional officers. Yeah. I mean, imagine what this poor son of a bitch yeah. has to come home to. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thus the behavior. Right. Dad probably entering the bedroom every time, you know, like with the shoulder pads and helmet on. Mom behind him pushing. You know when they try to get the uh, violent criminal out of his cell? That's my favorite part of, of any TV. Whenever they do those prison shows, there's always that one guy's like, I'm not coming out. And they're like, there's 40 huge beaked up officers. They're out there and they put them in football pads and stuff and they just bum rush the guy. And the guy, it's, it's a certain, where are you going? What's your plan? Do you, you know what I mean? At a certain point, unless you got a tunnel. Well, you if, just gotta, if that, if, if you know, yeah. I hope that, you know, I, we deal with stuff like that in psychiatric hospitals too all the time. And, and the reality is when you're dealing with very, very, violent and sick people that is the only thing that contains them I and mean, when, when we're making plans about how to contain the terrorists and people like that yeah same phenomenon in the bum rush same phenomenon all right all right uh oh, don't even get me going with that terrorist stuff drew Why? I, you know because i was just i was watching the the news and they were talking about how this uh abc news oh, sent yeah, the, the uh, spent yeah. uranium through the port of right, los right, angeles right. and it, basically the deal is this spent uranium Obviously, uh, it's not going to hurt him. It's spent uranium. Okay, here's what it is. Spent uranium is the same as a depleted uranium, which is a uranium that just doesn't have the radioactive qualities anymore. And it's super hard metal. It's what they use to make uh, shells and Gatling guns and things but like they that. They make dirty bombs out of it, right? Not the spent stuff. I thought it still had enough radiation to cause some mm, problems. Uh, no, no. We fire. Our military fires spent uranium okay. all over the place. Uh, okay. 
which is not good for you, especially yeah. when it's going through your sternum. Yeah, yeah. But it's but it's like the hardest metal known known to man. It'll it'll go through armor and all that kind of stuff. Now they just use spent uranium because obviously they didn't want to bring real uranium into the into the country. But anyway, they got this spent uranium. They put it in like a lead case. They put it out of Jakarta. They sent it on a ship over here, and it went right through uh, the port. And they towed it right down the 110. And Every time it, you know, we ever hear any officials talk about it, it's like we just don't have the manpower. We can only check two percent of the containers that are coming into our country's ports and all this kind of stuff. But, and by the way, should we advertise that we're laying that way? It seems like an uh, open invitation. Like, uh, hey, ninety-eight percent of what you try to send over here, terrorists, is going to make it through. That's not a great uh, message to send. But it's always we don't have the money, we don't have the manpower. But then we need $87 billion to send to Iraq, and we need uh, $20 billion to invest in the Star Wars research. Seems like we could use a couple of those billion dollars and just hire a couple of yokels to uh, head on down to the dock and maybe open a crate or two. Doesn't it? Seems like it. Doesn't it sort of seem that way? Yeah. Uh, I understand, yeah. understand those, those billion things. Uh, you know what I mean? All right, yeah. People start throwing around stuff. I mean, like, like a couple billion dollars thrown at the ports gets you a couple of $9 an hour guys for a couple million years, right? Good thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's hear something from uh, Wait, we had the, the, what, what is the song we're going to hear? Uh, oh, I, I got it. Hey, I got it written left. down here somewhere. You had it. I, uh, yeah, I buried it with uh, a bunch of other uh, There it is. All paperwork. that's left. Here it is. Yes. Fast ending. Right in the middle of uh, chewing the fat with the band. Uh, where the hell are we? Talk we're going to hear something else from uh, Thrice in the 11 o'clock hour, by the way. I guess we're actually taking a break. Oh, are we? Yeah. All right. I feel like I should work more. You know, I yeah, just yeah. got here. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, good times. Huh. Uh, we'll take a break. Be back right after this. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Riley and Dustin are both here from Thrice. Yo, Yo the uh, name of the album is The Artist in the Ambulance. And uh, we'll hear something else off of that. Possibly the uh, title track in the 11 o'clock hour. All right, let's help the kitties now. Let's, let's focus now. Kara? Yep. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Hi. Okay, nice. first of all, Vegas show does suck. I have to agree with that. You figure that, even though you've never been there. Yes, I have. I oh. go there every month for soccer tournaments, and it sucks. We just played Bakersfield. She went to a softball tournament soccer. there, I think. No, <laughs> soccer, not softball. Soccer tournament. Soccer tournament. Soccer. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, what's up, Kara? Take your retainer out, Kara. It is out. Th okay. Now it is, yeah, good. Go ahead. <laughs> I like that retainer, though. I'm going to get my wife one of those. <laughs> Uh, put this on. Why? Just put it on. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's hot. Now take so it out. Anyways, um, I have a friend, and we were talking about it the other day, and she's all, like, sex. she thinks sex makes her fat because someone told her that it does, yeah, and the person who told her is fat, and so she's freaking Wait, 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 hang on Some, someone, told, wait, someone told her that, yeah, right, all of a sudden her <laughs> yeah, stomach swells tummy gets over nine months, strangely enough. <laughs> uh, but you get... You, look, Sex makes you fat. That, that someone told her that, or her mom and dad told her that. Um, I think someone did. Like a fat person told her that, and so <laughs> her dad. <laughs> her dad told all her that. the time. That's how I got. Like her this. dad told yeah. her that. <laughs> this, this is just his parents. Uh, this, this is like no, uh, or fat. Look. <laughs> how, yeah, I don't know. Right. Well, okay. How could uh, how could sex make you fat? But I thought it. I thought you would lose weight. I mean, that's just me. Yeah, it's pretty neutral. Pretty neutral. It's yeah, some exercise. I mean, like, the way Adam like, does it, it's an exercise. Well. <laughs> For no. the for the partner, right? Yeah. How is it neutral? Like, so it yeah. like doesn't do anything. It just kind of. <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> Kara. What about like birth control? Doesn't that make you like? Kinda... Yeah, birth control could put some weight on it. If you particularly the estrogen, you know, the, the estrogen doses, uh, heavier estrogen doses will do that. Uh, mm. Progesterone will lean you out though, so it's different for different people and depends on the combination <laughs> of the pill. Do you realize that at least eighty percent of American female teenagers between like 13 and, and 19 just sit around thinking about weight. <laughs> do, do you understand? Like yeah. your average 16 year old chick who listens to the show just thinks about fat versus non fat. Like, and, and you know what the research really shows that, and it's something you've been saying, but they don't think about anything else. But that's what I'm but saying. But here's the irony though the research is showing that 
your weight, as you've said, is, is genetically endowed. Yes. You get your weight, and you have about a 3 to 5% variation off that. Right. And if you just reasonable, exercise reasonable, you're going to stay in your zone. Yeah. But whether it's a good zone or not is up for society to decide. But you ain't going to change your zone. But whether or not society has decided it right, it's going to stay where it stays. Yeah. Right. I just, I just amazed that women. This is all they do. Like, is a, is a is a six year old guy? You're thinking, what what am I going to do? What am I going to do for my future? Like, uh, what am I going to do for a living? Yeah. Or I got to beat that guy up? Yeah. Or <laughs> I got to drink some Mickey's in the park or something. Yeah. At least there's other thoughts. Chicks, it's just, am I fat? And do guys think I'm fat? And who wants to have sex with me? It's about 80% of our callers. And, and if you said, look, um, I'll trade you, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you 180 IQ and a, uh, a doctorate, but i got to put 25 pounds on you. Be like, no, no way. No. Not even. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. Isn't that great? Is it, what, what's gone wrong? Hasn't something gone wrong? Yes, yeah, something has gone wrong. Uh, that, uh, media. I blame media. You do? Yeah. Right, yeah. but well, first of all, we're part of it. That's right. We got to change it. Right. Uh, part of it is I think that the kids aren't invested enough in themselves. You right. know what I'm saying? They don't feel good about themselves because no one invested in them emotionally. They're yeah. not invested in their education, so they see no value in that. So all there is is, is their physical self as reflected through the eyes of the media, really. Right. That's all there is. So it's just pretty much look in the mirror yeah. and judge how you're doing. Look and that's about it. Yeah. All right. Um, Malachi, 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 Malachi. Yeah. All how, do you, right. how do you pronounce that? Malachi. Malachi. Oh, Malachi. Is that Hawaiian? Um, sure. Why do Hawaiian people end up in Arizona? Yeah. You notice that? Tidal you know, wave. University of Arizona. They all the, the all the football Hawaiian. players have. Uh, Malachi is Hawaiian. Malachi is. Yeah. Jewish. Yeah. Oh, really? Is Malachi yeah. Jewish? Uh, no, actually, it's biblical. It's biblical, but. Yeah, you could say it's Hawaiian. Yeah, he's just sort of—he's sort of like he's like, like running out of steam mid-set. It's like he can't get the word. Out. Yeah, I mean, he may have a Jewish name, but he's got the mind of a Hawaiian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do not be deceived by the Hebrew name. He's got that—he's got that thick-headed Hawaiian but you know, brain. You know, U of A. All their all their football players have the. Yeah, you know they have a lot of them in uh, Utah too. Really? Yeah. I don't know what they. Well, Utah fucks. Oh, what did he do? Did he just use the F word? It sounded like it. All said, right. I think he said. Sucks. Sucks. Oh, sucks. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, my question. Yeah. Do you smoke a lot of pot? Um, I have. I've done many drugs. Drugs suck. All I do He's is smoke quick cigarettes. On that one. Oh. Drug, drug what? He drug Every suck. time he says suck, it sounds, it sounds like he's starting it with an F yeah. because his, like, he, his tongue is so lazy right, it doesn't right. even want to participate right. with his forward. jaw. He it's like forward against his, 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 his jaw's like, come on, we got to move again. And the tongue's like, uh, uh. and he's like, come on, dude, we got to talk. You know, I need you learned. to form sentences. Uh, uh, uh. He, has, he has learned that drugs suck, and they, that we're, but they, part of the reason he's learned this is because there's been some injury probably. Malachi? Uh, hello? I'm here. Yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you seriously. You have a very unusual name. You don't know what the origin of that name is? It's, it's biblical. Okay. Thank you. It's Hebrew biblical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's... But your parents aren't Jewish, are they? No. Um, my parents are Hispanic, Native American, and Irish, and they're divorced. Okay. That's Whoa. Now, see, that makes more sense. Now, it all came together. Yeah. The Native American, the Irish, and... And Hispanic, it all... Yeah. Psh, pow! Right in the focus. <laughs> the Jew thing was confusing me for a while. <laughs> all right, go ahead, then. All right, my question is... Okay, I developed... I met a girl, and it's the only girl I've ever had deep feelings for in my entire life. Right. She meant the world to me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we got to know each other over a period of time... And I, I just, I thought the world of her. I loved her with all my heart. I even told her so. How old was she? She's, she's 21 now. Where'd you meet her? I met her. Well, I saw her at a rave first, dancing. Okay, you're how old? Um, 17. How old? And, and where, where, uh, how old were you at the time? Actually, I'm. I was. 17 at the time. I'm actually 19 now, but. Okay. Right. Yeah. I was a little right. dishonest about that, but. <clears throat> so, over a period of time, she has a daughter, and, and her daughter's four years old. 
Yeah, and this girl is going to be a, uh, a handful, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, that's well, the only way you could have that kind of sparkling attraction to her is yeah. it's just total chaos. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. But my question is, okay, I developed feelings for her over time, but after we were sexually, you know, involved, it was just mm-hmm. once, I felt like she totally turned off, and it's like... Yeah, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's a new Woody Allen movie that's coming out about this. It's called Sing really? or something like that. I have it's no a, idea. It's about exactly this kind of a relationship. <laughs> and the woman's got sort of a borderline personality disorder, yeah. and they have sex, and all of a sudden she she starts having panic attacks, can't have sex with them, sort of getting distance, but has sex with other guys. See, but I know it's not because I'm I'm not you know good sexually because I know yeah. I know my sexual. Uh, you, guy, you sound like the best. <laughs> yeah, it has whatever it is. It has nothing to do with you. Especially that, it is it's oral good or bad. It's like, come on, tongue. It's time to do oral. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we gotta do some licking. We gotta impress this chick. Huh? Oh, he would yeah, have, he it's would like, have that kind like, of reaction. You, I had to say three words yesterday, and you want me to uh, lick some uh, twat? No way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Malachi has, uh, Malachi, it's like he, he just got back from the dentist. Malachi comes from alcoholism. All right, buddy. Come on. Now, listen. Big time. We got to straighten you up. Do you hear me? Yeah. What are you doing? You working? No, I'm going to school. Who's the alcoholic, mom or dad or both? Um, probably both. Okay. All right. Sex addict. Now, so this, this is where all, this is why you're attracted to all that. And where are you going? Junior college? I'm hoping to major in English. At the junior college? At, at, well, I mean, do my regular classes at Pima, but then go to the U. All right, Chester. don't, no, 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 no. junior college. That's <laughs> junior college, yes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is good. He's in junior, oh, laugh, Malika. <laughs> he, he, listen, you know you're in junior college, right? The classrooms are on wheels. There's yeah. ashtrays everywhere. Teachers look like they're looking for a place to die. Yeah. Yeah, okay, a bunch of guys that look like you just wandering around. Okay, no more junior college. You got to get to work. You understand? Uh, I mean, I've worked before in the past, but yeah, what you got to you got to work McDonald's, again. No, McDonald's. you need to you need a trade. I've done that. Okay, you he need, worked at McDonald's. It's shocking. You need a trade. You understand? Yeah. Oh, true. Every everybody's. I worked at McDonald's. What's that, trade? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Genius. What's that? What's trade? What trade? Oh. Uh, electrician. Oh. No, no, no. That's too dangerous for you. A plumber. All right. All right. All right. You like need a job. Drop out of junior college. He must be like a framer or a floor guy. I, some, I, I, look, oh, that's all I'm saying. we got to go to break. But uh, college isn't for everybody. He's wasting his time. Oh, He's yeah. wasting everyone's time. He's just yeah. kicking around, yeah, yeah. scoring weed. It's just get get to work. Yeah. Get a job. Fight to keep it. All right. All right. We'll be back. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Thrice is here. Dustin and Riley both here from the band. Hello. The Artist in the Ambulance is the name of the CD. We'll hear uh, something else off it in uh, the 11 o'clock hour. But for now, it's back to the phones. Got a question for the band. David? Yes. Yeah. You're 17? Yes. Hello, Dave. Hello. Sorry, I had you on Thank you. All don't, right. don't, don't rush to pick the phone up there. It's oh, <laughs> sorry. <a> minute. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, um, well, one, thrice, you're amazing. You're Thanks, one man. of my Thank favorite you. bands ever, and I'm going to go see you when you come in Seattle on October 27th. That's cool. Show. Cool. So. We have a whole list of their upcoming tours. I'm really excited yeah, for that. True. What am I supposed to do? Read the whole tour? Uh, I can, I can glance and pick up, and I'll tell you where they're going to be and that kind of thing. No, a... no, get away from that. <laughs> Here's what you can do. You can, you can go to their website. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, that's uh, www.thrice.net. Wow, a band that actually dot got their name as a web domain. Yeah. Net. Yeah, dot, right? dot com was owned by some guy selling email addresses, so well, went to the next. next so uh, step. if you go to that, you can probably find uh, the tour dates out. Excellent. All right, go ahead, David. Right. Um, anyways, yeah. So I'll be excited to see you guys. Um, I was wondering though, like I'm in a band, and I was wondering how you went from like playing at community centers to playing at like you know the showbox and going on tour with Thursday and stuff. Very slowly. Very slow. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Yeah. We basically just kept playing and took every opportunity that came okay. our way. Um, when did the band form? Uh, a year and a half ago. Oh, oh yeah, I'm talking. talking to me. No, I was. Okay, yeah. sorry. But that's all right. You guys been all right. So David's band's been together a year and a half, and so guys, Rice has been together for five years. Five years. Okay. That's relatively, relatively new well, by for, religion standards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so, how long did you guys play before you had any success? We did like nothing for like at least a year and a half. So, are you are you playing like shows already or? Yeah, yeah, we're playing shows when we just recorded uh, eight songs in the studio. That's awesome. Just seriously, just keep taking each step. Like, you record something, sell right. some of it, play some shows. Should, should I send it out to like clubs and stuff? Because we don't really have a record label. We just got together. Yeah, definitely. And we'll send um, it to clubs, and I would say play whenever and wherever you can, and well, never like, say no I, to a show. What I do is. I find other high school bands, and then I organize, like, I rent out a community center, like a gym somewhere, and just yeah, that's awesome, man. shows and stuff. But it's like, I'd like to play a show where it's people that I don't know, not just my friends that show yeah. up. But then you get you get a following, and then you can contact some smaller clubs, and you say, well, my I, band yeah. can draw 100 people or 150 people, and that's how you get shows, because the promoters and the, the people that book shows at clubs, they want to make money. So they want to know that you're going to bring somebody, and it's kind of like a catch twenty two situation. And they're not going to pay right. you really, but, but yeah. it's but just that's, that's you start playing for more people. But so it. always the same answer, which is uh, if you're good at it, or you want to be good at it, or get good at it, and you love it, you just do it. Just mm -hmm. keep playing, any chance you get, and whatever it is. There's no magic like. Thing no, that's I know we like, get this like... every every time. I mean, if you're a stand up comedian, just do stand up comedy. If you're a band, you got to play. And you know, don't piss anybody off and do everything you can do. But there's, there's, <laughs> I don't know why people. Have we ever heard an answer where we've went, oh, there's I never knew. <laughs> well, that. this is this the is key. that world we live in, which is uh, what are the four you know, secrets to losing weight? Well, give me the four secrets to being a hit band. It's like no, there's no such thing as that in life. It's like period. If you, if you yeah. like doing it, keep doing it, and right, you make choices in life. You follow your passions, or you do the safe thing and you do something that you know. Gives you security, whatever you make choices right. and you go down those paths. But losing, million, losing weight is a good example yes. of you want to lose weight. You do you you run a bunch yeah. and you eat stuff that tastes kind of crappy, but it's good for you <laughs> it's, and and it's painful it's and it sucks. Crazy, and then you lose weight. Crazy notion that you make these choices. Here are the choices you make, and you'll be able to be fill in the blank. I know it, it, it is weird. So and it, it's false. full of crap. It's yeah. Absolutely false. And they were selling that everywhere. And you know what? People always do that too. Even if you're telling them your story, they'll go. So you met Jimmy right. at the so and so, and that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, I was busting my hump trying to do comedy for nine years before I met Jimmy. Right. But then you met Jimmy, <laughs> right. and then... So I need to find some guy that does morning radio. Possibly, that's the answer. possibly that's the, named that's, Jimmy. That's, that's the secret. That's the secret. There, there you go. It's like Jimmy, pe Jimmy, Jimmy. people... Okay. Yeah, listen, every story where somebody has any kind of success, there's always some break along the way. Some club owner likes them, some record label exec was hearing him, some uh, morning show uh, radio guy thought he was funny when he was his boxing instructor. I mean, there's always some goofy story somewhere along the way, but the band's got to be good in order for the record label guy who happened to go into the club to take notice for you to get your break, right? Yes. And the way you get good is you keep playing. Mm -hmm. All right. Or you don't. But, you know, I think the most... <laughs> or you, you don't. No, no you Thank don't. You. Some people, no, no, some people don't get good. And I was going to say the most important thing of all is to assess and accept reality. Thank yeah. you very much. That's you know true. what I mean? You guys, you guys believed you were good. You looked at it. You listened to people that told you you were good. And you, you don't evaluated have to believe it. You're good. You just have to believe that you're at least progressing. I think getting better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you. Yeah, that's that good. that's a very valid yes. point too, which is, don't keep assessing yourself. Just keep moving forward. Right. You, you don't have to stop and uh, right. find out what everyone thinks every ten feet. Just keep rolling just, forward. If you think you're definitely you're gonna to suck it. when you start at whatever you're doing. Yeah, what what seventeen year old guy? I mean, if you got a band and you're seventeen, unless you're Silver Chair, you yeah. should yeah. suck. <laughs> Where is Silver Chair, by the way? Maybe they decide to suck when they're like in their mid twenties or something. Where's that band? I heard they're having a new album. Oh, really? I think they're That's, working no. on something. They're, they're coming out with like I think they're uh, random. The singer was having a bunch of problems. I well, think. he had a he had a bar mitzvah that was coming up that had been weighing on his mind. <laughs>
Well, he started the band when he was seven. And then the driver's true. license yeah. thing uh, came up. Yeah. The driving uh, test. Voice changing, <laughs> pubes popping up. It, you know, they're trying to release their fifth album. This guy sprung a pube. It's tough on a band, Drew. Our tour manager is Australian, so we always get the random <laughs> updates on Australian <laughs> bands that we've never heard of. And well, you get uh, men at work and a uh, silver chair. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and Jocko. Too. Remember that guy? Oh, no. All right. Let's do those battery commercials. Joey? Oh, my God. Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. Hey, um, uh, first of all, I want to say hi to Thrice. Hey, You hey. guys are awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to see you on Halloween. Oh, oh cool. cool. That's going to be an awesome Where's Yeah, it's going to be a great We don't know show. where we're going to be at, though. Orange County? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Halloween, we're at the... No, I said we don't know what we're going to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are you going to be? Oh, in uh, L.A. We'll be at the Palladium. Hey, Joey? We're still yeah. undecided on costumes. Do you have a question? Well, anyways, yeah. Um, my my girlfriend and I are uh, sexually involved now. Uh, mm -hmm. She's 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, my question kind of has to do with, um, I can't really get her to orgasm. Mm -hmm. But that's common for teenagers, right? Right. Well, I was I was on the Internet today trying to figure out, you know, if I could find some way to get her to orgasm. Well, hang on a second. Well, Once let, me again. Talk, let me talk to the band. When did you get your first orgasm break? How did you guys do it? With, what are the four I met a guy named Jimmy. And, <laughs> and, uh, just continued from there. Uh, yes, you got on the Internet. What did you find out? Well, I found this uh, the site was saying that girls with bigger boobs, um, it's harder for them to orgasm because they have too much estrogen or something like that. And uh, she's pretty large up top herself, and I was just, I was wondering if, like, there's some way I can, you know, 16. like, get that. Yeah. To, like, Hold on, I can feel Adam's resentment rising. <laughs> How big up top is she? Because I like that myself. <laughs> um, I think she's a 36D. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. You don't really know? Yeah, not, not, not really. Not your cup of tea, because I'm really going to get angry in a second. <laughs> no. There's nothing worse than a guy who doesn't like big cans who gets big cans. As a matter of fact, that's the way you get big cans. You sit, you announce to the world and God at like 15 that that's not really what you're into, and then magically, boom, big cans come hit you right in the face. But when you uh, pursue them like uh, I have, they become like Moby Dick. <laughs> the elusive big cans. He's sort of lukewarm, or the jury's still out on the big cans. Joey? Yeah. Okay, but do you like them big cans? Or? Uh, I could really care less, actually. Oh. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I, I, 16. 16. Yeah, well, is, uh, I, I like her for who she is, you know? Oh, now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, she's listening, right? Yeah, probably. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I did that math. All right. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, that's All right. an interesting theory, but I know of no uh, evidence that that's true. And, and the large-breasted women have higher levels that, of circulating I, estrogen. I don't, I don't know that that's true, and nor do I know that uh, estrogen necessarily makes it more difficult to orgasm. In fact, for most women, although progesterone has an androgen or male hormone effect that some women do respond to and become more orgasmic and more sexual, yeah. most women are kind of shut down by it. So estrogen actually makes women more receptive more interested in sort of receiving a man. Receptivity, I don't talk about this very much. Receptivity is a sexual experience that men do not have. Right. And if you talk to women about it, it's a very vivid experience. Sort of, that's why they can have a receptive experience of intercourse and not orgasm and be satisfied. Right. And men, that's can't even be comprehended. That's what like, Charlie Brown's teacher talked about. You mean not, yeah, not having an orgasm right. as a guy and him being satisfied. By, by the receptive experience. Just the right. idea of receiving somebody is... is I like, I like the thought of receiving like a BJ, <laughs> and then I can, if I don't have an orgasm, I can use it later, you right, know, when I'm course, alone. Of course. So, I mean, you know. Still all better. directed to orgasm, and that's the androgen. That's oh. the male hormones. All right. All right. All right. All right. Andy? <laughs> Yeah. You're right. You're so, right. Look, you can't get over the 16-year-old who... Uh, Fat, <laughs> I say. <laughs> I've turned to an old Jew all of a sudden Fat. on this show. Yes, you did. Andy, you're 13. What's up? Um, well, I was wondering, does masturbation affect, like, growth anywhere in any way? Growth? Huh? What? Growth? Oh, yeah, growth. Not that I'm aware of. Not that it's been documented. And, I, and given that all males do that, and all males manage to develop normally... Yeah, but who knows? Maybe we'd, we'd all be eight feet, feet tall. tall. Yeah, 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 could be. Never know. But it's never going to count. Therefore, that will never happen. Maybe Shaq never beat off. 
<laughs> Maybe that's his secret. Um, his, the chi also, keeps um, churning. That's and right. It keeps, you it's know, like fertilizer. Yeah. It just goes right back into your roots, you know? Whereas my fertilizer's all over the hamper and the bathroom. It's, Socks. it's a mess. Socks. It's a mess. It's all over. The, it's like Bandini Mountain in my my bedroom. Remember that commercial, Drew? No. You're, you're, what, what is you're it? Making what don't, I'm sorry, what but do I, you not know? I don't know Jacko, and I don't know Bandini Mountain, but I'm the, impressed that you do. Ban uh, well, you guys are too young, but I, I know it. The oh. skier with the giant pile yeah, of poo. Yeah, uh, really? a big pile of really? manure. Yeah, he's and the he old skis guy. And the old guy. How old are you? 28. Yeah, oh, yeah, ancient. Drew, why don't you know things? Because <laughs> I didn't watch TV. I didn't oh, watch you TV. were 11 when this goddamn thing came out. Why can't you know anything that I know? How Maybe come I can't know anything you know? Why is it that we, we all know so our own well. stuff and it never works? He had the Charlie Brown thing, but no one, no one liked that. The Charlie Brown it. teacher? Yeah. That's his Good. thing, actually. Yeah. No, yeah. that's fine. Everyone knows. Well, Drew. Bandini Mountain. All right. I'll get in. Jocko. <laughs> <laughs> Jocko is this big, like, uh, Australian rules rugby or f player. He was like this big bald guy. And uh, he, in like in the mid '80s, put the battery. I remember it, Bob Bob Black Sheep. What's no, the, no, 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 that no. Too, yeah. That's Conrad. That's Conrad, uh, yeah. Robert. Uh, the no, he 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 had a, he used to do commercials for Ever Ready Battery, and then he had a series out for a while. Wow. I, I'm telling you, we we get on this computer during and look uh, up Jocko, okay. and then look up Bandini Mountain, and then and then look up uh, Numb Nuts and find a <laughs> picture of yourself. Good. That's right. All right, where are we? Yeah. Who was I talking to? Someone? No. Oh, Andy. Take a call. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're fine, buddy. Uh, um, I also, um, you know the name Malachi? Yeah. Um, it comes from a Catholic prophet um, named Malachi. Excellent. So Thank you. Andy, you, puberty will come, masturbation or not. Right. He's worried about his development. That's what no, I've mean. already hit puberty. I'm just wondering Can't will you it affect anything. Oh, yeah. I thought this was uh, James Earl Jones when he first called in. I didn't know who it was. Do a lot of voiceover work, Andy? What happened? Okay. Oh, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, like, like I, I, I can see him doing like movie trailers. Like, like let's see you do this, Andy. You ready? Yeah. Do Orson I, want, I want you to do like in a world without justice. <laughs> world one man stands. No, hold on a second. <laughs> one man stands alone. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. World without justice. No, no. Hold on. In a world. <laughs> in a world. Okay. Shh, in quiet a now. world without justice, one man stands alone. Sounds like the yeah kid the red in, uh, rum kid red rum, yeah yeah Drew's not seeing the shining either so don't bring it. up don't it. bring up red rum red rum red rum all right so Andy it reminds me too much of my kids it's driving me insane all right buddy all right, good times well he's a man had his bar mitzvah he hit that puberty head on all right let's talk uh, Jonas hello hey we're on our hey. biblical theme name <laughs> show tonight what's up John. <laughs> Well, first of all, I have two things to say. First of all, I already hit puberty. Yeah, we hear it. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. And I'll like to say hey to the guys from Thrice. Oh, hey. man. Okay, I have a question. Hold on a second. All right. Kennel. Kennel? How many dogs do you have there? Actually, two. All right. What kind are they? Um, a Dalmatian and a Chihuahua. Oh, oh my oh, God. What a combo. <laughs> These are the two worst dogs ever. Are they going to breed? Did I you, hope you, you have a mother, or they're your, your family's dogs? Yeah. Your mom watches way too much movie and television. Yes. <laughs> right? That is the uh, Yokiro Taco Bell and 101 Dalmatians. That's what that is. I means. think so. Yeah. Dalmatians are nuts. They're like the. They're like the crazy ditzy coked they're up not, blondes not of the of the dog world, and and not only not smart, but they're uh, manic yeah. and yeah. bizarre, and and. Uh, the uh, Chihuahuas are just—they're just mean. Yeah, they're horrible. Those two worst dogs. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. well, well, just because they've been on that? TV and movies. That's why. Uh, there were, apparently there was a huge resurgence of both those dogs being purchased along the time of the, that commercial for Taco Bell. No, I never heard of it. Hundred one. <laughs> never heard of it. What's that? Never That's heard of Taco that. Bell. Never heard of either one of those things. What are you talking about? No one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> How's that feel, Jonas? Yes. All right. So what's up? <laughs> well, I'm going to the Halloween. Doesn't feel show good, like does it? You're what, and huh? I'm going to the Halloween show, Thrice. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Good times. And I need some help on my costume. I'm kind of wondering if you guys can help me out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're just supposed to tell you what to be? Yeah. Like, I was thinking about... I thought we had choices. Guy. Which guy? 
I was thinking about being that crazy guy that called in on your KUCI interview, the lacrosse helmet. <laughs> we called this question happening. Oh, really? Did, like two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. We're like, dude, I swear, someone's going to call him up. Go as one of the Aquabats. Yeah, go as the Invisible Man, <laughs> who's also mute. <laughs> <laughs> the band would prefer that, I think. Let, let's hear something. Be, from yeah, the it's, band. Time. it's be, time. Be left-handed. Yeah. yeah. We'll, uh... Hear a little something from uh, Thrice off the, uh, the artist in the ambulance. Yeah, it's name of the song, name of the CD, and here it is. Thrice, everybody. If you want to find out anything about the band, you go to www.thrice.net, and you can uh, find out uh, show schedules and uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, we're going to take ourselves a, uh, another break, but we'll be back in about four minutes right after this. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Dustin and Riley are both here from Thrice. Yo. Yo. The artist in the ambulance. Name <laughs> of the CD. All right. Let's see. Let's talk to line five. Lindsay? Hi. Hey. What's up, darling? You're 21. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. And, nice. um... My boyfriend, well, my ex-boyfriend is really unsupportive, and I'm not sure if I should try to continue any kind of relationship. We haven't talked in a while. He lives across the country, and um, he doesn't want to talk to me, but he seems like he still wants to be involved in the baby's life. I'm confused. How can he not talk to you and be involved in the life of the baby? Put the fetus on the phone. Okay. (laughs) You talk through the fetus. That's what I do. What? Um... I'm not really sure exactly what he wants to do. Um, All I know is, like, he just really feels like he's too busy. And I think he feels really, like, angry because we were um, addicts and we were both using him when we first got together. How's his recovery going? It's going really well. I'm nine months clean. No, no, his recovery. His recovery, well, he does both Narcotics Anonymous and Sex Addicts. Right. And I don't think his recovery is going that well with sex addicts, but I can't judge his recovery. Can't judge. Can't so. judge. We can't huh? judge. Hey, yeah, you can judge. <laughs> I can judge. Okay. All right, so how about you give the kid up for adoption? Um, I don't know. I've gotten really spiritual since I've been in recovery. Yeah, yeah. So, and I finished college. I'm going to grad school. And yeah, you know, I, I don't mind her raising a kid. Really? No. no. Uh, who's but, paying for this? Though? I'm scared. I may have to pay. <laughs> may. <laughs> for this, well, um, the dad is on a fellowship, so he actually gets paid pretty well. He's getting his PhD in Ivy League school. That's the same guy who is. That's the chunky sex addicted guy. <laughs> huh? This kid. Uh, that's the dad, right? Yeah. What's yeah. he getting? That guy's got range. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta give him, give him his props for having that kind of range. What's he getting his degree in? Um, communications. Hmm. He went back down. Again. He dropped a little, <laughs> but he, he's he's going to what Ivy League school is he going to? Uh, I don't want to say. No, no one's gonna know. Come on. He's going to um, what is it? UPenn. University of Penn. Yeah, we've been there. Yeah. yeah. UPenn. Yeah. University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 Okay, so like this guy, you know, this guy sounds kind of self-centered to me. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, but the whole thing sounds intriguing, though. Still, it's, very, yeah. it's more complicated than usual. You can keep the it's kid really on a trial yeah. basis. Here, here's the yeah. thing: you're in recovery. Your recovery's going very well. He it wants is. To, yeah, I can tell. I'm really excited about. No, it. No, I get it. You're 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 going to make it. That's why I don't mind you sort of raising a child, and you'll be a you know available mom, and this is all good. She, Dad. You may be out of the picture. Is there a way that you could get another, you know, are you, do you have another, do you have a boyfriend or somebody else that could function as dad for this child? I am, I would like to have that eventually, but I don't want to jump into a, another. Mm-hmm. You have nothing set up. You're cute though, right? You're attractive. Yeah. All right. See, here's my okay. plan as a guy. <laughs> uh, let me just say this, you guys. You, here's what you're getting. Okay. Let me explain. Uh, explain. I talked to my buddy the other day. He was driving out to Bum F. I said, well, what are, you, what are you going all the way out there on a Saturday for? He says, I go to the Sears outlet out there. They have appliances there. I got myself like a Kenmore washer and dryer, you know, 1800 bucks. Got it for 900 bucks because I had a ding in the side of it. 
Yeah. But a ding that no one cares about. It's like up right. against the side of the wall. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He's getting top product that he couldn't afford, but just because it's a second, you know, it's got a ding or scuff in it or something, he's getting it cheap. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He can now afford this top name product. Right. You could get Lindsay cheap right now. Yeah. I'm saying she's 21. She's hot. Her name's Lindsay. It's a good hot name. It's <laughs> a big ding, though. She's she's edu- you know what? She's, she's educated. She's got a little ding in the oven. That that's fine. That's fine. I'm saying a guy. I don't think who she'll Lindsay, go for it. I don't think I don't think she'll come down to the number. I don't, I don't think she'll come down to the perceived number by the guy. Okay, but you know? then then a guy who could step up. Either way, she she's she's right for the picking. You you know what I mean? I mean this is this is the, the this average, is the Sears yeah, mall outlet yeah, mall possibly. You, you you slide in now as a guy, a guy who normally couldn't land this kind of chick gets this kind of chick because she's pregnant or got some a hole boyfriend who's off neglecting her. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I I get you. I'm with you. Okay, I'm just saying that. I'm just telling guys. You know, I'm trying to. I'm like a consumer advocate. That's all. So the question then, Lindsay, is right. is it worthwhile trying to tr- find some way to give your child? Uh, dad, and you know this is this this is going to be my opinion, and this is not going to be based on any good clinical information. Just my sort of instincts about these things. Okay. Uh, if it's a girl, try to keep him in. Find a way to give them a relationship. Uh-huh. If it's a guy, he needs just a male. He needs a stable relationship with a male figure. It doesn't have to be the biological father. It's a boy. All right. All right. Don't You're worry good. about it. Don't he, worry. He about just it. he needs you more than he needs that. Yeah. Right. He just I'm, scarecrow I'm not work with a guy. I'm all right now. Yeah. Huh? You're not. You're not going to be at the, the outlet. No. No, I'm not at the outlet mall. No, not no. yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, I'll tell you when this kid is like seven months old, you'll be outlet mall. That'll be right. We got to slide right in. Can I ask another question? <laughs> yes, by all means. Um, Doctor Drew, I was really wondering how. Um, I'm kind of worried about raising a child that's come mm-hmm. from two addicts. Yeah, you need my book. This but, is somebody I want to... Like, I'm going to send you my book. I would okay? love to read your book. I'm going to send you my book. I'd be really excited. Lauren, you send Drew 4495. No, 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 no. He's going to send you. You're the perfect reader for my book. Okay. And, and I want you to read it and think about how recovery can make you perhaps even more present than the average person. Yes, and you're concerned about whether this be an addicted child is completely reasonable. The probability that he will inherit the gene is about 50%. By the time he's eight, you'll know if he's got that gene or not. Really? Able to tell. Eight? Yeah, you'll, they can, most parents can tell whether the kid's got the gene or not. What, is, what do you do at eight? Just give him a, a rig with some heroin in it no, and see if he goes the, for the, it? No, she'll recognize the things that she did and stuff when she was eight. There's a certain right. behavioral quality. Right. And, uh, you know, if you, the most important thing is to raise as, as psychologically carefully as possible and keep your recovery right. very solid. All right, all right. Give the book out. I'm going to give the book out. All right. It's called Cracked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on the line, Lindsay. We'll get Lauren to talk to you. Uh, Ricardo? Yeah. You're, uh, I've had a ass crack full of crack tonight, by the way. <laughs> what? Because uh, just, we just did uh, Jimmy's show together, and it was uh, more book stuff. You know? yeah. So I've, I, had, I, got, I had my saturation okay. level right. met early. You That's certainly all. got right behind me and helped me promote it very nicely. I certainly did. Yeah. Didn't I? Uh, wait, wait. Oh, no, I guess that didn't happen. No. Ricardo? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. Question for the band? For the band. Oh, I just... I'm in love with Rice. All their records are great. I have a problem with the new one, though. Like, I feel like if the major <laughs> label made you guys, like, I don't know, not seem as hard as the second one. Because the first CD came out pretty good. The second CD came out, like, oh. 10 times They know now. Ricardo's talking to you guys. 17-year-old Ricardo yeah. from Los Angeles going to give the band notes. Uh, You're a huge fan, though, right? Huge fan. I went to go see him at Cal State Fullerton with the free show. I saw him at the Troubadour when Hot Water Music headlined. I got on stage. And sang with the basses, and then like my ass showed on the guitar. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a huge fan. But the new CD seems like if Island made you guys seem like you not know, too. You're you're being paranoid, bud. Am I? Am I really? Is it? I don't know. Dude, I promise you, if we if we we started writing that record before we signed to a major label, and we kept writing it afterwards. But if you would have heard that record on an indie label, you would have been like, yeah, man, it's. It's way better, and you wouldn't have had a second thought about it. Let me, so uh, don't yeah, uh, go ahead. Don't worry about it. Don't I, don't do that. If to you yourself. if you don't if you don't like it as much, that's totally fine. But it has nothing to do with us changing labels. Let me uh, give everyone some insight as far as the man. I mean, I don't like the man any more than uh, the <laughs> next guy. But the man does not have as much influence as the average person thinks the man has yeah. over the product. Uh, I mean, uh, we do TV shows, we do radio shows. You guys make records. It's everyone thinks it's some uh, 
short, stout, white guy with a cigar like a comes in and tells them. you what you can yeah. say and what you can't say and what you can do and play this kind of music and stuff. Uh, the reality is that there's really not that much of that going on any at all. That, any of that? Yeah. Maybe, maybe none. It, it's it's a, almost a, a, a it's a misconception. It's, it's a almost paranoia. a wives' tale a paranoia. or a paranoia that oh yeah he can't talk about this yeah. because of that. No, if if you if you talk to most people who do a show or make a record or write a write a song, there's not so much of the man's influence really. The, the man may do a little editing before uh, he he may the man can decide what he wants to buy and what he wants to back. But he doesn't really usually screw with the product that much, like or does like, he? I don't know. If there's like a a pop band, like maybe like it's it's a different story. It was put it's together, constructed yeah, that yeah, way. It's yeah. constructed that. But like, if a, a label signs a band, like they're like, okay, we like the what you're doing. The last thing they want to do is screw keep, with what's been yeah, working. Keep doing, yeah. That's exactly the point. Like, yeah, I, and it, like, what we did and that. there's probably a few people out there that think that way. Like, but definitely with Island, I mean, like you guys are doing good. Want to help you do better and. Keep doing exactly. uh, they, like yeah. they didn't flinch. Like, and they, they signed. And they're like, sweet. They signed you because of uh, the sound that you had, and they don't want to screw with that. And it's just. I think people so do. If you don't like it, it's our fault. All right. Did, did MTV ever talk to us about anything? No. Yeah. <laughs> it was a couple things. What they say? You said Hitler. <laughs> and yeah, it I told him to shut up. And it wasn't a man. It was some couple of women. In fact, remember that? Yeah, who ended up being our censors later on the Man Show. It was uh, awesome. But no, I just yelled at them. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah. I just told him to shut up, and and then that was the end of it. It's like I'm not going to do it, and then they never bothered us. I mean, yeah, I got we mad did because you just said the word Hitler. He, yes, I don't know. Yes, I, but I I'm saying that we did we did a show on MTV for a number of years. I did a show on Comedy Central for a number of years. No one ever came around and told us what to do, or or what to say or what not to say. They uh, obviously once in a while, if you cross the line and you got you know too blue they would say hey reel it in but they never said do this joke do that start steering it this direction it was it was never any of that where is the man by the way i'd like to find that and by the way it ain't a man it's a handful of fags please <laughs> we'll blame it on a uh, the portly white guy with the cigar it's really the guy in the, the bad tassel loafers and his uh, mock turtleneck running around with a horrible opinion let's worry about them am i right the man she man josh oh Josh? Yeah. What's up? You're 24. Yeah, I got a question. Um, I I was molested when I was younger, uh, around six years old, by my older brother. Hmm. Um, my question oh. is, is... Hold on. Uh, how, how much, much older, older is he? Uh, he was five years older than I am. He All was right. 11 and you were six. That's correct. Mm -hmm. How long what did that go on? What was that? How long did that go on for? Uh, it only went on for probably about a year. How uh, only? Basically, what ended up happening was is that it was my parents would leave him to babysit with us, and if we did anything wrong, like he would he would tell me like if you don't want to get in trouble, don't tell mom and dad if you do this for me. Mm -hmm. And what what, uh, uh, what who abused him? That I I'm not sure of. I I don't think anybody actually did abuse my brother, and I just try to figure out you know where this came from with him. Um, mm -hmm. My my main question and concern is um, I had run by my I ran it by my parents probably around the time when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, they had ended up telling me that you know this could have never happened. Um, they were taking the defensive side. Always. Know? Of course. I know. And my problem is, is that, I mean, I moved out of my house when I was 17 years old, um, decided to uh, get into therapy when I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, I got married at 19, mm -hmm. and my wife was the one that kind of pushed me forward to go into therapy. Why was the problem? To, um, I, I had very bad um, issues with depression, uh, anxiety. I have very bad panic attacks that come to a point where I end up passing out, not breathing, and then mm. I come back to it, and that's kind of like my release. Do your do your parents believe you now that you were molested? Uh, no, they don't. My mm. parents still don't take to it. You know, they should, you should have. You should have. They're always going to deny. It. You should have yeah. done what I did with my parents, which is I I, I uh, tricked them. I said, 
I wasn't molested. And I kept poking my dad in the chest, and he said, oh, yes, you were. And then I tricked him. I was <laughs> then like, said, yeah. Then you said, wabbit season. <laughs> Shut <up. laughs> well, Shoot see, him now. I, my question is now is that yeah. I had been on, I had been basically pretty much a guinea pig for um, different types of anxiety and depression medications. Josh, and Josh, stop. Yeah. That, that's not being a guinea pig, okay? That is how appropriate therapeutic regimens are arrived at by trying okay. different combinations until you get the biology right. There's no okay. way to measure what you need. There's no way to predict what will work for a given individual. You have to try things. Well, my, so. right, so right now, I mean, I've been to a couple different therapists. Um, I almost come to the point where I want to give up on it. Only for the fact that every time I go to see somebody different, I get labeled as something else. I've oh, yeah. been labeled as manic depressant. I've been labeled mm -hmm. as like multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. They've they've labeled me with everything under the book. And my question, my main concern is, is that multiple? I had gone, mul hang on a second. Multiple or dissociative disorder? They said multiple, right. and they put me on that uh, Zyprexa. Yep, yep. For that, right. and that basically. I, the, the main reason why they said multiple personality disorder was because of my issues when I would have a panic attack and I would yeah, pass out. Yeah. But that's dissociation. That's that's How's life. your wife doing? My wife is fine. Oh, <laughs> she, man, she got a handful. Yeah. Well, she's got a handful, but see, my issue is, is my biggest concern is that I had found a medication that worked for me, which was Selexa. And I had been on Selexa for oh, a, a second. I gotta say, you know what? Once in a while, and this almost never happens. Somebody speaks at the perfect cadence, not too fast to be entertaining, not so <laughs> slow that I can cut them off and interject every ten <laughs> seconds to, to try to interject some entertainment into it. But the exact pace that can technically go on for, for infinity. And, and strangely, it, they come, they come right up against a break. Never yes, not. yes. It's just like I and I don't. I feel horrible. It's like Josh has been to hell and back. On the other hand, I, he's getting on my nerves now. I don't know why. He's not really asked this question yet. I think we just need to wrap him up and and, and get him out. All right. All right. So, but he's not going to let you do that go very easily. No, break. no, because I'm not going to come back and and get into it, Josh. Yes. What's the question? Question is is what I was. I found the medication that was that was good for me. Selexa. Alexa. The question is, is that when I, after two weeks of being on this medication, the effects wear off. Sometimes. And I, and I don't feel anything from it. And my question is, is where can I go from now? Double up. But ball in your doctor's supervision. There's also a, a more, let's call it purified form of Selexa called Lexapro. Yeah. You could switch to that. It comes in from before. Miami. They don't step on There's it. There's plenty man. to be done still. you got to talk to your doctor. And you may also need the Z Zyprexa with the Selexa. That's a common combo. All right. We're going to uh, take a little break He was here. interested. I'd like to talk more with him, but there you go. I think he may be an addict, too, so subtly. I think that's in there somewhere. Because really? that's the pe When people say, I've tried everything, i tried everything, and, it, and I work hard and it, something's missing, often that's what's missing. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, take a quick break. Thrice is here, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Jocko Drew. Dustin and Riley both here from uh, Thrice. They're uh, going to be in here for about another, uh, say, about 13 minutes. Mm. Uh, the name of the album is The Artist in the Ambulance. And if you want to find out any information about the band, you go to www.thrice.net. All right. And... Now, why did you say when it was .net? You said well, the band got their name. Their well, they were able name. to. They were even though it wasn't a .com. They it's were not able like to. They thrice. Were, yeah, thrice the band or or .net. Or yeah. Right. Nobody. Nobody. Oh, no I band see. get just, just their name as a domain anymore. The, too many people have gone out and typed it before right. them. Someone bought your name. Yeah. Someone bought my name too. Nice. And if you're listening, jackass, <laughs> <laughs> have fun renewing it because I told you nine years ago. You can take it and shove it up your ass. I don't want it. I never <laughs> will want it. You picked the wrong guy. This is a huge waste of your time and your money. Drew, have you ever heard me no, talk about never. the Internet? No. Do I care? No. This, actually, if you said, I'm going to do some, a website and put your name on, I'd be angry. <laughs> I don't want my name for that. Yeah. What are you going to do? You got people bothering you now. They're typing. you got to type back. F that. All right. 
You know, that's, it's, it's, look, call me old fashioned, but it's for pornography, okay? That's it. <laughs> that's what the web is for? That's what the web's for. Nice. That's very old fashioned, yes. Kelsey? Yeah. You're 18? Yes, I am. That's a hot name, that Kelsey. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That means you're uh, either really hot or just uh, ironically huge, like, you know, in a, in, a, in a sort of bizarre poetic way, you know. Which is it? Um, I don't know. It's not my opinion. I guess it's everybody else's. Yeah, what do they think? Oh, I don't know. I just have to ask my boyfriend sometimes. All right, but you got a boyfriend and there's nothing wrong with him? No, he's great. All right. That means you're hot, then. <laughs> well, thank thank you. you. Question is, Kelsey? Okay. Um, after every time I have sex, I feel like I, I can't hear anything. I feel like I am underwater. Do you actually have complete deafness? Hi. Wrong hole, maybe. <laughs> Ironic response. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't barely hear you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe it's like that all the time for you. Well, just notice it after sex. It was just even after the first time I had sex. It was I just I felt like I almost went deaf after that. I could barely hear what anybody was saying. To How me. long does it last for? Um, fifteen twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you hyperventilate when you're having sex? No. Do you dissociate where you kind of check out, don't know what's going on? Hi. Right. <laughs> yes. True. This you need to eat your hearing check. No, uh, for, forget having sex and losing your hearing. I think you've lost it all the time. Kelsey, you get a water polo helmet. Yeah, you need to have your hearing checked. Do you think? All right, this know. is going to take too long. <laughs> okay, can't get through it. All right. Does the optometrist have to bang her? Huh? The audiologist? Oh, I mean, not the optometrist. <laughs> the uh, let's see your doctor. Your nose throat? Yeah, is that o who does your hearing? Otolaryngologist. Yeah, is he we'll put that thing in her ear? Of course. That the thing light is. in it? Not his penis. I mean, the, no. the light thing. Yes. yes. I like. What are they looking for with that thing? Looking at the eardrum, and you can see signs on it. It was behind the drum. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good times. Hey, yeah. So go get your hearing checked. Well, and, and what then, about this? Because we've heard about I mean, this. Before, yeah, there's their we? migrantist phenomenon. She can. She could be dissociating, having an emotional reaction. She could be hyperventilating. She could be getting Valsalva and bearing down and actually increasing the fluid. And like, a lot of things could be happening here. But uh, have heard of it. I don't know that it's necessarily associated with anything serious. No. Yeah. CJ. Yeah. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Just wanted to say you guys are awesome and you guys help a lot of people, and I think that's really cool. Thanks, CJ. Uh -huh. And anyways, my question is, I can't seem to tell any girl no for sex, even if she's um, not very rude but unattractive. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if maybe this could be caused because of, like, depression or, like, maybe something with my childhood or something like that. What happened? Well, um, not really much. I... I did have, like, one small case of, like, where I was a little bit molested, but I don't really look oh. at it as a big deal, but maybe I guess it was more than I really well, know. It, it, it is that, that what you're describing, basically, is when you come under the spell of someone else's priorities, their, mo their drives. You become a victim. You freeze, and you are sort of in a spell. You sort of, you sort of can't help but go along with them. Yeah. And that suggests a victimization. I mean, that's, that's the kind of a victim role. It's just so could it be chaser. All, like an addiction, too, or anything like that? Or is it can be, and, and again, have, yeah, it's part of that whole syndrome. Yeah, it sure could be. Well, so, what happened with the uh, molestation? Well, like, basically, um, it's kind of embarrassing, but when I was, like, about maybe, like, five years old, um, my brother just kind of took me down and, like, peed in my mouth. <laughs> and wow. that's about... Huh? But that's, uh, I don't know, that's more funny than his molestation. Yeah, exactly. How old's your brother? He's about five or six years older than me. How old were you? I, I was five. four or five. Could he have ejaculated in your mouth? Oh, Maybe thought he was... No, no, no. Because, no. <laughs> see, that's the thing. I think he thought that that was like sex. Sure, why you know? even entertain that? He was so young, too, so it's not All really right. a big deal. Right. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's medium big. I mean, I guess it's a big deal because I remember it. So I mean, Yeah. All right, but that that's not the reason. That had nothing to do with that, I don't but think. But whatever right. happened to the brother that made brother do that, did do behave like that, was also happening uh, to CJ. I've, I've peed on hundreds of my you friends. You didn't put the penis in the mouth and pee on them. In the mouth. No, no. Okay. Was it in the mouth? I, he didn't say it was in the mouth. Yes, he did. No, I said he peed in, in his mouth, but didn't say yeah. in the mouth. It was in the mouth. Uh, it was in the mouth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Oh, true. Mr. Wright all the time over here, Mr. I don't know about Bandini Mountain or Chaco or anything. <laughs> sorry, sorry to have made you Common feel so knowledge. defensive. Well, no, I mean, he said he peed in yeah, his yeah, mouth, yeah, and you just, you, you saw it as putting the yeah. mouth in being. I, yeah. I, you know, I got range. I know. You, you can brew. You can sit in the front seat and pee in somebody's mouth in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you've done that. No, one of my I've done some great urination stuff. I uh, whizzed on my friend's leg underneath a booth at a diner. You know, he's just sitting there eating. <laughs> I was whizzing on his leg. And the thing about that is, is when you're wearing jeans and like boots and socks and stuff, and someone's seconds. whizzing on your knee, it's a lot, <laughs> and it's out of context. Like, it's not, it's not like you guys are, you know, running around on some deserted beach or something. <laughs> Chasing you're, with your Yeah, penis. you're sitting at a diner. <laughs> It takes a good five minutes for it to register. I mean, by then you're empty. You're empty. It, it's. I mean, oh boy, I good could time. tell some stories. That's good time. Yeah, it's 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 right it's right at body temperature. It's just nothing. We really? didn't know we, until we, we, a little bit later. I he evacuated. I, his I knew. I knew he knew when his iced tea came flying at me. That's <laughs> when I uh, suspected something. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Well, it's time to give some thanks where thanks is uh, due, as we usually do on uh, Thursday. I want to thank uh, producer Ann for doing a wonderful job all week. Junior, 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 producer Lauren for doing a, a fantastic job filling in for Ann when necessary. I want to thank uh, Magic Finger One, uh, Engineer Anderson, for uh, sliding the potentiometers. I want to thank uh, Tara Don't Call Me Tar, goddammit. She still work for us, Drew? Oh, yeah. Doing a great job on the phones. Brian doing a great job on the phones. He still works for us, Drew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Chris, our uh, producer, engineer, I should say, over here at uh, K-Rock. And Whatever. Course, uh, the band thrice. <laughs> so, did I forget anybody? Did you say Anderson? No, I said Anderson okay. earlier. Yeah. No. All right. All right. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Shh, In a now. world without justice, one man stands alone. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.